Guys, in this video, let us look at descriptive studies. We are starting off with descriptive studies, right? Under epidemiological methods, we have observational and experimental studies. In that, we are uh, we have already seen the introduction to all this in the previous video, right? So let us start off with descriptive studies, guys. Under descriptive studies, uh, basically, at the end of descriptive studies, you will just come up with a hypothesis. Okay, that's it. You are going to come up with some uh, hypothesis, which is very incomplete kind of a thing. If you want to prove it, then you will have to do all, all these analytical studies, etc. So basically, descriptive study, it is the first phase of epidemiological investigation. It's the first phase. So you will just observe the distribution of the disease, right? You will uh, uh, just look at the characteristics. You will identify the characteristics with the disease, you know, and you just guess what could the association be. So here, what and all will be there. When is the disease occurring? At what time, you know? So that will be time distribution. So there is time distribution, three things. Time distribution. Place distribution, person distribution. You will just observe, guys. When is this disease occurring? What is the time distribution? Is it occurring in summer or winter? When is it occurring? Uh, sorry, where is it occurring? Place distribution. So, is it occurring in the urban uh, place or the rural place, etc.? Who is getting the disease? Person. Are children getting it, or women getting it, or aged people getting it, or men getting it? So, person distribution. So, all these. This is just a, a first phase of epidemiological investigation. You're just observing, right? This is an observational study. So here, what are the procedures they have written here in observe uh, in descriptive studies? Guess what? What are we looking at? Descriptive studies. In this, what and all will you, will you check? Time distribution, place distribution, person distribution. This is the first phase of epidemiological investigation. What are the procedures here? There's some procedures they are telling here. Basically, you will define the population. You will select a population, right? First of all, you have to go and uh, where will you do this? So you have to find the population, and then you have to define the disease under study. What exactly you want to study, right? Let us say these people, uh, you want to check lung cancer, right? Then you describe the disease in time. When is this happening? Probably at all times, right? Place, uh, which place? Uh, where is it occurring? It is occurring in the urban population or rural population. Person. Person means uh, to whom is it occurring? Mostly in men kind of a thing, right? If it is uh, lung cancer or then uh, measurement of the disease. You will measure. What will you measure? See, measurement of the disease uh, could mean something like uh, mortality rate, case fatality rate, all those things, right? Morbidity. What else? So are you getting it, guys? Then you will compare with known indices, right? You will compare and you will try to understand. You will formulate an etiological hypothesis. So finally, what should you get? A hypothesis. So in descriptive studies, main thing you have to write is time distribution, place distribution, person distribution. In this video, we'll only look at time distribution. Guys, so define the population means how will you define the population, right? The first thing, how will you define the population? So you will uh, basically, you will take the whole population in a geographic area. Right? Or you will take a specific selected group like an age group or a gender group or that is a sex group or a occupational group you can take or a hospital patients you can take, school children you can take. So there are different ways of taking the population. Okay. Now what is the disease? How will you define it? So the second step they are saying is defining the disease under study. So you have to um, look out for operational definition. What is What are they saying here? Look out, you know, for the disease or condition. Here they are talking about some tonsillitis and uh, inflammation of the tonsils, uh, streptococcus, pyogenes, etc. Something they are talking about, guys. You have to define the disease. Now you have defined the disease. Can you describe the disease? These words are really irritating, isn't it? You have to describe the disease. How do you describe a disease? Okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, okay, describing the disease itself is the time, place, person. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So now let us move on to the time distribution of the disease. So here, whatever they are showing you is, this is the time distribution. This is what we are looking at in this video. Then you have place distribution. Then you have person distribution. So in this video, we look at time distribution. Okay. So time distribution, um, is it uh, in a particular year? Is it in a particular season? Is it in a particular month or week? Is it at a particular day or hour? Or what is the duration? Something like this. This is the time distribution. So now they are saying it could be a short term fluctuation, periodic fluctuation or a long term or secular trend. Short term fluctuations, they are expl explaining everything about epidemics, guys. So basically there are types of epidemics, right? Um, uh, so many types of epidemics. Epidemics itself, separate video we have that you will have to explain everything in short term fluctuation, right? Uh, so epidemic is the occurrence, uh, you know, of the illness or health related event clearly in excess of normal expectancy. That is an epidemic. So guys, uh, did you understand? 
So about all about epidemics, if you want, you can explain here based on the marks. So there are common source epidemics, propagated ep epidemics, slow or modern epidemics like diabetes, etc. So basically there is epidemic curve. Guys, you go through epidemics video. Okay, here we want to just explain time distribution. Then you have periodic fluctuations. Periodic fluctuation means uh, some diseases can have seasonal trend, right? So where are you guys? Guys, look here. We are looking at this one. seasonal trend. Some diseases may be more in winter or spring or summer or autumn. Summer, you can see that uh, summer, uh, that uh, spring catar actually is in summer. You remember that vernal keratoconjunctivitis. It happens more in summer. Measles is usually, uh, you know, in early spring they are saying. Okay. Uh, upper respiratory infections, where will you see? In winter, right? When will you see gastrointestinal infections in summer? Okay. So uh, there are say they are saying polio uh, seasonal variation is unknown for polio, but some places they said that it can be there in a particular season, right? But however they are saying it is usually unknown in India probably seasonal variation. Guys, did you know that even non-infectious diseases can show a uh, seasonal variation? Obviously, right? You saw just now vernal keratoconjunctivitis is a non-infectious thing. It's an allergic condition, but it can have seasonal variation like um, summer. In summer, you can have sunstroke. And they're saying even hay fever, snake bites can be seasonal. When do you think these snakes will bite seasonally? When do you think snakes will bite? In the forest? Okay. That, yeah, that's a different way of explaining. Okay. Now, um, where are we guys? Cyclic trend. They are saying some uh, some diseases will have cyclic trend. Guys, uh, for example, measles, right? Uh, it appeared in cycles, they are saying, before the vaccination era. So, something here about season, cyclic. What is cyclic? Measles. It appeared in cycles with major peaks every two to three years. And rubella used to come every six to nine years. So they don't come like every year They ha or every season. Like two to three years, every two to three years measles will come. And rubella will come, wait. Rubella will come every six, uh, what did they say? Six to nine years. Okay. So this was due to naturally occurring variations in herd immunity because of herd immunity. Okay. Uh, see, then influenza pandemics. We're talking about pandemics. This, you know, every seven to ten years, there should be antigenic shift, isn't it? If I'm not wrong, for a pandemic. Actually, there should be rainy season also. You're right. Okay. Then what else? They have some cyclic trend. Non-infectious diseases. Uh, like automobile accidents are more frequent on weekends, especially Saturdays, because people drive more on those days or what? So there's a, is that a cyclic trend that every Saturday there are more accidents? It's really bad. Be careful. Yeah. Accidents. Yeah. Uh, so what did you understand till now? You didn't understand anything? Guys, long term or secular trend. Let us move to this long term or secular trend. Secular trend implies change in the occurrence of disease over a long period of time, several years or decades, okay? So here they are talking about um, coronary heart disease, lung cancer, diabetes. Coronary heart disease, lung cancer, diabetes. Do you think people will get uh, in winter and it will go away, come back again next winter or something? No. Does it have short term fluctuations? No. These are long term secular trends, okay? So these things they are saying, uh, TB, typhoid, the diphtheria, polio, these are showing decline. Decline. So these are declining and these are increasing. People have more non-communicable diseases than communicable, di communicable diseases now. Isn't it? Okay, then uh, what is this? Well, what do you think this is? A watch. Watch. What, what face is it? Joker? Yeah. So basically what not panda, not panda. See, whatever they have understood till now in the time distribution, they want to interpret the results. Okay. So let us try to interpret. Okay. By, uh, so guys, are you with us? So now let us interpret the results, interpretation of time trends. How will you analyze this? So, uh, in layman terms, you know that, uh, oh wait, every, uh, summer this problem will occur. You would have learned by then, right? Every rainy season this problem will occur, every winter something will occur, malaria will be there. So this and all people themselves can understand. So right, surveillance or monitoring of time trends. Uh, so it will show 
which disease is uh, increasing which disease is decreasing so what are the uh, health problems okay and you can formulate etiological hypothesis you can try to understand what the cause could be what is it the health problem so yes health problem they are trying to understand the cause okay so then what else uh, they are looking at the variation changes in age distribution some other determinants specific non specific etc etc basically here we are looking only at time right as of now we are not looking at person distribution or place distribution but then they will have to put together all that and they have to find out why so in the next video we have to look at uh, place distribution and person distribution so guys in this video we started off with descriptive studies and we wanted to look at what exactly time distribution is so we looked at what the procedures in descriptive studies are and we looked at uh, okay in descriptive studies what and all you will do you'll define a population you'll define the disease you'll describe the disease using time place person distribution then you will measure the disease compare the known indices and finally you should come up with a etiological hypothesis okay so uh, time distribution means it could be uh, let's see here year season month week day hour duration of the disease etc then you have place distribution person distribution which we will look at in the next video in time distribution guys um, there could be short term fluctuations like epidemics you'll have to explain everything about the epidemic curve etc types of epidemics all that you'll have to explain uh, which separate video is there on epidemics then periodic fluctuations guys you can have seasonal trend or cyclic trend which are the two periodic fluctuations can you say seasonal seasonal trend 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 cyclic cyclic trend trend these two are what periodic fluctuations periodic fluctuations, fluctuations yeah then you have um, long term secular trends like uh, these things are like so long right coronary heart disease lung cancer diabetes tb typhoid diphtheria polio etc then you will interpret these time trends and you will try to understand the health problem okay in the next video we will look at place distribution person distribution etc That's all for now in this video guys bye 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 bye